how to simply clean your pellet grill on a pit boss or a Traeger. I've been asked this question so many times and I have two pits that need to be cleaned up. So grab a rubber glove, Jack. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. Both of these pits have ran over 16 hours since the last time they were cleaned up. The Pit Boss Elite did two cooks. I smoked up some pork butt overnight and that cook took right around 12 hours. Then I smoked up some pork belly and that cook only took around four hours to complete. The Traeger Timberline XL did three cooks. The first cook was some basic chicken thighs and that took right around two hours. The second cook did some spare ribs. That was about five hours. And finally, I smoked up a couple chuck roasts and that cook was approximately about nine hours to complete. So yeah, they both ran right around 16 hours. Now you don't have to do this, but I do to keep my hands a lot cleaner. I use nitrile gloves. It really helps me to keep my hands clean because I'm touching cameras and the last thing I wanna do is get some barbecue grease on my lens. And it doesn't matter which color you buy, you're just trying to keep your hands clean. I also use a couple different styles of brushes when I'm cleaning up my pits. I use this style on my grates in between cooks, but I've kept this one just for this video. You can see that this is starting to fray so this thing belongs in the garbage. But I use these two when I do a deep clean on any type of cooker. This is just your typical welding brush and I replace it twice a year. I love how thick the bristles are. And you'll see the way that I do this, you ain't gonna have any bristles stuck on any grates. This wire brush, I use just in the bottom of the chamber, just to clean it up a little bit and scrub off some of that grease. So let's start off with our welding brush. I'll take these grates out because they weren't used. I just start scrubbing up each one of these bars. And you can see from where I didn't clean compared to where I have, these grates are already starting to look a lot better. Same with the Traeger, I haven't used these grates yet either. Now some of you might be against wire brushes and so am I, especially those thin little wired ones they peel off and they can stay on that grate. But with these, nah, wire bristles don't come out very easy, but you'd still wanna replace this a couple times a year if you cook as much as I do. You know, as long as I'm at this, this could be kind of a comparison. So if you're interested in either of these two pits, perfect time to take some notes. On the Traeger, you got three bottom grates, but you always wanna get the bottom of these cleaned up too because there is grease and grime on there. Might as well get that off as long as you're cleaning it up. And same thing with the Pit Boss. Get that grate up and get some of the Klingons off. I use terry cloths when I'm cooking, either for wrapping things up to keep them nice and warm or rubbing off the outside of the pit. Once they start to get a little used and gross, then I end up using them on the grates. Just take your rag and wipe them down. And you can see that's a pretty big difference compared to what I had before. And if one of those welding little brush bristles would stick on here, this rag will catch it. And get the bottom side wiped off a little bit. The Pit Boss grate is a little heavier, but it's all one piece. So you don't have to mess with doing it three times. A lot of grime on here, but don't throw this rag away because we're not done with it yet. Get yourself a couple different sizes of plastic scrapers for the next step. I use these to scrape down the deflector or the drip pan. Just take your scraper, start breaking it up. So this first step, I just kind of scrape it down and get it in a pile and get it out of the pit. Once I got it scooped up, I just throw it right in the trash. Now on the pit boss, pretty much do the same thing. I start scraping this one towards each one of these little edges. Scrape it down, get it into that pocket. Scrape it into a little pile again and get what I can out and throw it in the trash. On the Traeger, I pull out this little vent top and we're gonna get this drip pan out but I still have more to clean on this. And I have an old little container or bucket that I put these drip pans in to finish off cleaning them up. And just like the grates, I take an old rag and wipe this down a little bit too. Just helps get some of that grease and grime off. Now I'm not looking for perfection here. I just want it nice and clean and get the grease off it so we don't end up having any grease fires or flare ups. Now on the pit boss, we gotta remove our deflector plate and that's a little trickier 
because we got to get it kind of on an angle and once you kind of get it in that angle it'll come right out same with this one we want to give her a little extra and be careful with this little flame broiler because that likes to fall off and again grab our rag and wipe her down now we get to the heat deflectors or the baffles and those always have a little bit of ash on them so you're going to want to get them wiped down too and on this traeger you got a bunch of grease and grime on this snout get that off same with the pit boss we'll get him out of here Take your rag, wipe off some of that dust. On this newly designed Timberline, you can see there's still a bunch of ash at the bottom of this pit. You can see right here that the fan is able to push this ash over to the top into this ash and grease clean out. But the rest of the pit, you're still gonna have to vacuum out, especially that fire pot. There's no fire pot dump on this Timberline XL. When you have the baffle in on the pit boss, that ash stays up on top and it really doesn't get in the bottom of the chamber much. Now, once we have them all opened up, it's time to shop vac them. Now I have an ash vac and it works great for any of these pellet grills, but we also use just a standard small shop vac once in a while too. We'll start with the Traeger first. Now <laughs> it might be kind of hard to hear me over the shop vac, but I just sit and suck up all that ash. And don't forget to get everything out of that fire pot still. Now this fire pot does come out, but we're also going to want to clean up right around that igniter. After I get it cleaned up, we can just put the fire pot back in, grab our old trusty rag, and same thing, we're just going to kind of wipe this out just to get that remainder of that dust. Because we've got some grease on here, so it's going to help catch it a little bit. You can push it right down into the ash pot if you want to. Good time to wipe down the side a little bit too. That chamber is pretty clean, but we still have one more thing to do. Open up our cabinet and we'll get out our ash catch. And I'm gonna pull out my liner because inside this, we still have some grease and some grime and we might as well clean it out as long as we got it opened up. I just take this small little scraper, get it kind of cleaned out. And now I don't have to replace and get a new foil liner for it. Put it back in and then just lift her up and snap it shut. Same thing for the pit boss. Suck this little fire pot out. Get as much of this little clumpy stuff as I can. Now there's not as much in this one, but we still got a little bit to vacuum up. Now the pit boss elite has a removable fire pot, but seeing that we have this all opened up, we're just gonna vacuum out the stuff that's in it today. Don't forget your rag, scrub a dub dub. But I'd never wipe off any of the seasoning on the upper part of the chamber. I just wipe it down inside. I'd say that's pretty dang good, but I'll take a scraper sometimes and clean off this little bit of grease residue because that just builds up. So there's no sense to keep that in the pit either. I think my rag, it's officially trash. And you can also use paper towel for that little bit of wiping down inside the chamber or off of those grates. Just don't throw this in the dirty clothes because your wife is gonna kill you. Now that they're all cleaned up, it's time to put them back together. We'll start with the Traeger first. Get in our baffle, grab our drip pan and get that in. Get our little ash cover put in, put in our grates and we'll hang both of our adjustable shelves in because the Traeger pit, it doesn't have a place to store any of the racks that you're not using. Our Traeger, it's all put back together, so now let's do the pit boss. Grab your baffle first, grab the heat deflector, and this is a little trickier, but it can be done. Grab your flame broiler cover and then clip on the handle. Grab the grates and get them back in. Both of these pits have the kitchen style grates and it's really nice. This way you got a little catch and they don't come flying out when you're cooking. Now take off my gloves. We got one more thing to do and that's to wipe down the outside. I just use hot water on an old rag and just start wiping it down just to get all the dust and a little bit of grime if it's on the outside. I always like to really wipe down the handle because you never know if you touch it with some gloves on or something and get barbecue sauce on it. Nothing more irritating to me than having a dirty lid handle. And don't be lazy. Wipe down the cabinets. Same with the pit boss. We'll close that lid up and start wiping him down. Now with this stainless, we will dry this one up. Just take a good terry cloth and get the moisture wiped off it. And it doesn't hurt to give it a quick little polish. On the coated metal, I just take the wet rag 
get the legs. I also like to get the bottom shelf wiped down, especially over on this side by the grease pail, because there's always a little bit of goopy that will spill off from that. With that leg, you want everybody to see your pit and think it's brand new. And don't forget to clean up your backside because typically that's where you get a lot of staining. Well, not me, I don't get any staining on my backside. All right, so there we are. Two very nice and cleaned up pellet grills. I will say the more effort that you put into cleaning up these pits, the longer they will last. I always use 16 hours as the time frame of when I'm gonna have to clean up my pit. But no matter what, after three cooks, I always give these pits a deep cleaning. Now, if you got any questions or you wanna see any other comparisons on these pits, leave a comment in the description below. I also have some links of the materials and the equipment that I use to clean up my pellet grills. And look, my hands are clean. I'm a little sweaty, but that's not a big deal. But my hands are clean, so try Nitro gloves. And if you're looking for a good brand to purchase, check the links below. Those black ones are unbelievable, and I use them for cooking all the time, too. So I actually hope that this has helped all of you with the questions on how to clean up your pellet grill. As long as I got them both cleaned up, might as well go ahead and cook on them. Maybe we'll do a comparison and see which one has more smoky flavor. I don't think there's gonna be a big difference, but there certainly is a big difference in price. Well, that's all I got. Roll the nation.